Hello and welcome to Blue Zone. This is Blue and today in this video I'm going to show you how to use FSX at War. Now this video is uh, very basic in nature. Uh, we're only go going to cover the uh, how to run the FSX at War primarily. Now there's going to be more videos to come. Uh, Unlike my previous videos, I plan on making many more small videos to cover very specific parts because otherwise if I try to cover the whole thing in one video you'd be watching a 10-hour movie and more. <laughs> so in any case, uh, without further ado, let's get started. The objective. Learn how to run FSX at war and get a general understanding how to run it. Learn how to run missions and create flights. And why do we care? It has destroyable targets that can be detected by radar, and I will show you that. And where would we use it? In mission planning, target practice, and also can be used with CCP to create missions with moving assets and targets. So the combination of FSX at war and uh, CCP creates a very rich uh, environment. Things to note. Will be as I indicated earlier. I'll be making many smaller video, small videos uh, to cover FSX at War and its functionality. Uh, there's a help document that's included, uh, which covers everything, and it should be included with your FSX at War software. There's also a guide that was created by uh, Cougar that actually shows you how to create your own uh, campaign with a twist but uh, we'll get we'll get in details with the uh, with the videos you can get more news about the physics at war in the progress by going to their Facebook page you can also share your pictures and videos on my group and I'll post a link and those links will be in the description and you can also get news from Blue Zone on my Facebook page so when I release videos what have you that's where I put it first and uh, and so on and so forth so about the FSX at War, it's a campaign engine, and what that means is that uh, it actually uh, manages the all the equipment and all the effects of the equip uh, the, the uh, of the armament. In fact, it uh, the engine itself is a uh, is the one that determines what can be destroyed and how much will be destroyed. For example, when you actually if you have tag pack and you drop a bomb. Uh, they may have it set up so that everything within 50 feet, if it's within 50 feet, it destroys it entirely. As opposed to FSX at war, the way it works, if you drop a bomb and something is uh, 45 feet away, it might get damaged slightly, but not necessarily be totally destroyed like it does currently. So that's a big difference. Everything is weighted. It's a little bit more realistic. The effects are fantastic. And I'll take you through a few a few things just to get so you get a feel for what you can do with it. This this is what we've all been waiting for for a long time. No AI fighter, a group or a ground battle. So that's planned as a future update. Uh, so for the time being, we'll be fighting. Uh, you'll be fighting each other, or fighting some uh, some dumb dumb fighter, uh, dumb airplanes without any intelligence in it. Now, FSX at War is not CCP. In the future, CCP functionality will be integrated with FSX at War and be part of it. But for the time being, you can run FSX at War alongside CCP. Now, FSX at War is made for FSX, as the name implies. Some features may work in P3D, but it's not tested. So you'll have to experiment a little. Now, FSX at War is built with the ability to get updates on the fly. So, when there's an update available, you will know because every time you load FSX at War, it checks to see if an, if an update is available. So, once there's an update ready to do, to be delivered, at the flip of a switch, you're now able to update your FSX at War, which is a great feature. How it works? So, let's say that uh, you load FSX at War. And your buddy loads FSX at war. You both load the same 
uh, campaign. Now that's important because obviously you want to have the same objects on both sides. Now you load up your FSX. Now when you load up the FSX, both of your uh, yourself and your buddy, the objects are loaded into your FSX. Now uh, when you first start up, when it's first loaded, it will actually uh, cache all the objects. So you'll feel you'll see a performance hit, but I'll mention it again uh, later on in the video. So the way it works is the objects that you're both seeing are the, are the same from uh, your perspective or your friend's perspective. So let's say that you actually go and fly a mission and you destroy a target. As you destroy a target in FSX, the target is destroyed in player one's FSX at war as well as player two's FSX at war because the engine knows to add the destruction to the object or whatever amount of destruction that was made. Now, you both have the exact same destruction. So at this point, let's say that you were done for the day, you both would save your, your, um, your campaign, and then the next time you go out flying, if you want to resume where you were, you load that very same campaign and you're both in sync still. So that, in, in a nutshell, is how F6 at War uh, runs in general. I mean, it's far more complex than that, trust me. But I uh, just want to try to keep it simple so that you can get to enjoy it. And if you want to delve deeper, there's plenty to learn. Okay, so let's look at, a, at a, the FSX at War interface. I have just started FSX at War, and I will show you. And you will notice that in this case here, when I started FSX at War, there's a lot of yellow, and those are actually updates that are available to us. And if you look at the top here, you see my current version, dot 7.4, and I have an update to dot 7.5, 7.6, 7, 7.7, and 7.8, and also a uh, list of what changes took place. All I have to do to update to the version 7.8 that's available is click on a download. Now it will do this every time. Uh, it will check to see if there's any updates every time you start FSX at war. Now I will not make you wait through the whole thing, but I'll come back once I have the, the new version installed and we'll carry on with the, our look at the FSX at war. After having installed FSX at war, the last step for the installation is to add the folder to your scenery so that you can see the FSX at war sceneries that were created. And this is a one-time thing because every uh, subsequent versions of FSX at war, assuming they have the same pack uh, num uh, version, will not change, so you won't have to re-add it. So also, you're gonna see later on in the video, we talk about packs to, to add up uh, in, a, in your FSX at war. The, f the packs each have folders as well, and you need to add those folders to your scenery. So let me show you how to add uh, a folder to your scenery which is, by the way, how you add scenery manually to FSX. So since Windows 7, it acts very strange, so, but it's very easy steps to, to follow. So the first thing you do is you go into your settings and you click on your scenery library. Now you see I don't have FSX at war in here or any packs or what have, or what have you. So you want to click on add area. Go into your add on scenery and in here you're going to see FSX at War Pack 1 and FSX at War Pack 1 Generic. The only one you need to use is FSX at War uh, Pack 1. Generic, you understand what it's for in future videos. So all you do is you highlight the folder that you want to declare, click on OK, and then move your cursor into the window here and right click. I know it's strange, but that's a limitation since uh, Windows 7 uh, because this software is old and it was meant to work with Windows XP. So you see my FSX at War pack has been declared. Now I'm going to add some other areas because I have packs installed and I want to make sure I have those scenery folders. So I go to the scenery folder. I have the pack 1 here. That's one that, that I'm working on. I will add that. Same principle. Right click in here. And I have one last one to add for my uh, buddy Skyspin created a pack, so I'm going to use uh, that pack folder and add it to 
my scenery left click and now in here I right click there you go so I have my three folders added all I have to do now is click OK and it will build my scenery database in other words it will redo my scenery config file and everything is going to be wonderful so that's it for uh, how to add sceneries in FSX and uh, now let's carry on with other things okay we will now take a look at FSX at war and take a look at the high level so you will see here there are uh, three sections on the left hand side tactical engagement which is where we're going to spend the majority of our time in this video and uh, that's where you create and deal with your uh, campaign tactical reference editor I will show you in there a little bit so that you get the, to understand what we're doing in there there's one piece I want to show you if you look here every time you start your FSX, uh, FSX at war it will check to see if there's an update and you saw what an update looks like when it's green there's no update you can also click on check for update and it will check for you but mind you it does check every time you load your FSX at war there's also a link here to the forum I encourage you to sign up to the forum so if you have questions or you want to share and there's also a slider here and the slider you can actually uh, move it and it has a background picture and the background picture is actually uh, actually reflects the section that you're in for example if I go into uh, the the weapons area and never mind what it's uh, don't worry about what's here but it's just to show you then it will show me a picture of armament behind it if I go into another area where I'm talking about uh, uh, platforms which is scenery kind of thing it will have a scenery background so it's just uh, something neat uh, and what I want to show you is uh, how to how to use the actual how to use uh, FSX at war to create campaign but first I want to explain one very key concept so here you have uh, what we call FSX at war pack the FSX at war pack contains everything that you see in here and you're probably wondering well hey blue why are you showing me the, the pack I'm only interested in campaign well the pack is everything uh, included into FSX at war and the reason why it's important is because uh, you'll see later on that uh, there'll be multiple packs installed uh, some of my own creation that I'm using to create videos uh, a couple of packs will be from my friend uh, Skyspin who created some uh, some campaigns that he wanted to share with me uh, also you will see uh, there's two other packs that you can download from uh, FSX at War uh, site itself, which is for Milvis F15E and also for Captain Sim weapons. So what that means is that uh, those packs actually uh, contain weapon models, they contain objects, they contain everything. And what the team has done is they've actually modeled the weapons on Captain Sim weapons, and they've modeled the Milvis F15E weapons. So what that means is, let's say that I'm a tack pack guy and I fly the Superbug. Well, a guy with the Melvis F-15E can fly alongside me and use his weapons in the same theater that we're flying together and uh, actually destroy destroy things. Pretty cool. And the same holds true with the people with the aircrafts with the Captain Sim weapons. But in order for those, those weapons to work, you need to have the pack uh, installed. So very, very cool stuff. Okay, so now that we understand the pack portion, uh, we'll go back here and let's take a look at the tactical engagement area. And this is where, like I said, we're gonna spend the majority of our time. Now in here, you're gonna see at the top left to some description, create a campaign, open a campaign, save a campaign, close a campaign. Now if I create a campaign, notice that you have the pack here so I could have multiple pack and multiple campaigns that people created and shared with me but in this case here we only have one so I'll select the F6 at War pack one click on next so notice that they provided us with three campaigns that we can use I'm going to choose the United Protection campaign because uh, the F6 at War team created some missions some pretty fine missions that we'll cover a little bit later on to show you how to use and they're actually based on the United Protection campaign so use that campaign and now the, you'll see that objects uh, 
appeared on the map here. This is a world map. Now you notice the aircraft here. The aircraft actually represent my aircraft and since I'm not connected to FSX it goes in the center of the world and it waits until I connect. But once I connect this aircraft is going to be wherever I am uh, in the FSX world. Now we have this campaign loaded. You can take a look here. It says United Protection at the top. That's the name of the campaign. So let me uh, use my mouse wheel and I will zoom in. And this is basically the United uh, Protection campaign. So you see that the uh, majority of it is in Libya. And uh, the friendlies are are based in Italy here. So uh, just to give you an idea how it works, so you have these here are all areas. So let me pick one here. So this one, for example, here is a headquarter. Now if I zoom into this headquarter, you'll see all the objects and or the piece of equipment that were added. And it will show you their status. Okay, so the status here, you see that the, there's a headquarter and there's some objects here. Now if you look at the objects, they're green, which indicates that they're healthy. And if you look at the, you can see a picture on the right hand side. You can also look at the damage and it shows zero damage. Now notice you have, uh, if I can right click on it and set it to be damaged if I want to. And it, you look you look at the uh, image; it looks tarnished, and the damage represents twenty. Uh, represent is represented by a yellow color, and you can also set it to be destroyed, which will give you a picture of what destroyed looks like, and a damage level of forty-five. In this case, here represents a jeep being destroyed. Now, you will not set uh, your damage here. Uh, this here will likely be set by you doing attacks, but it's a good way to check to see, uh, do a battle damage assessment, and to see what you, if your mission was successful or whatnot. Now, once you've actually flown the mission and destroyed your target or attacked your target, what you'll want to do is you'll want to save your campaign, so to save your progress. So all you have to do is just save your campaign, give it a name, and save it. And you see here, I've flown one already and I've saved my campaign and I will show it to you in a moment here. So you could save your campaign and then next time you're, you're, uh, you're flying with, your, with this, uh, this campaign or with your friend, you can load the campaign and it will be where you left off. And to load a campaign, all you have to do is click open. So let's close this campaign here that I did not save. And since I closed it, I did not save it. It saves nothing uh, of what I've uh, accomplished. Now let's open one that I've uh, actually already flown. And you will see here, see that little symbol here appeared because I've actually, this is the same area that we just looked at. And I crushed it. Uh, if you look, everything is damaged in this area here. I flew it and destroyed the whole headquarter while the, the other areas nearby were not attacked and they're healthy. You see that they're, they have some green squares on the items. So because I saved it, now that I, I opened it, I could go fly another mission and it saves my progress. So this is totally gone and this, uh, this is destroyed. So if there was a SAM on it, the SAM would be destroyed. It would not be coming back because the SAM is part of it. So the whole thing is destroyed. I can carry on and now attack the airport, for example. And then when I'm done, I can go ahead and save save the, the uh, campaign. And that's how it works. So now that's pretty simple. But uh, this is how you, you actually run a campaign. Save a campaign, open a campaign. And as long as you and your, your flying buddy are using the same campaign, it will stay in sync. So next we're going to go look in the plane and see what it does or how it works and uh, take a look at objects. Okay, I am sitting on the runway in Lampedusa, Italy. I want to point out two things. So take a look at uh, my frame rate and I have it set to 30, uh, maximum at 30. 
so it never goes over 30. And take a look at the scenery around you. Okay, there's not much here going on. Now I'm going to start FSX at war. You'll remember that I told you that you take a frame hit. Now the frame hit is not excessive. Uh, you take a frame hit simply because it's trying to cache all the objects, and then your frame rate will resume. So, and you'll see what happens when I start it. So let me go ahead and start it, uh, and get us into the actual uh, campaign. Okay, bear with me. And you should be able to tell when I actually go into the campaign. Notice the frame rate. It's down to 12.9, about half, but still flyable. I mean, I don't have any stutter. And here, you see that added some buildings. That's part of the FSX at war stuff. So this here will, will happen for a minute or two. But like I said, you can easily fly it and not have any issues or with performance and I don't have a very high-end uh, video card, at least not yet. So that gives you an idea of uh, that this here is perfectly normal. It is planned, so this way when you get on your target, you will not have the stutter or performance issue trying to hit your target. So hang tight, we'll come back later on and we'll start looking at, uh, we'll fly towards the target and I will show you uh, how you can uh, see the targets on your radar. And as you can tell by looking here, it's already cached, and we're back to where we were. Hang tight. We'll be back and uh, start to look at the radar objects. We are now going to look at our target on the radar. You can see the target for an airport is very large, and there's a lot of objects alongside of it. We're expecting a target in this area here, and there's also another base around this area here, but the one that centers the only one. I see a little dot that just appeared. Very hard to see for you, but I see it very clearly. So I will put my radar over that little box, that little dot, which I expect is my headquarter. There we go. I'm going to de designate and give it a chance to paint the image. And once the image is painted, I will be able to uh, refine my, my targeting. Okay, let me refine my targeting by designating again and moving the cursor on top of the target. I give it a chance to paint again, and the image the image uh, will refresh for us. And now I have a much better alignment, so I'm ready to drop bombs on it. You'll notice that my floor was slaved with it, so now you can barely see the image, but uh, you can see that it's there. And uh, as we get closer, the image will get bigger. And while you're getting closer, you can of course refine your your uh, alignment. I'm going to show you what happens while you fly in your mission and you have your FSX at war map open. It actually updates live while you're doing the mission and destroying things. So while I'm flying around and trying to dis destroy this headquarter, this is what it looks like on the FSX at war map. There's my plane coming in, heading towards the headquarter. And all these greens are operational objects. I dropped the bomb. Boom. And there we go. We've destroyed the whole headquarter. And this is what it looks like from the headquarters perspective. We don't want to be in there. That's pretty good effects, isn't it? Love it. And secondaries. <laughs> Gotta love it. And more. <laughs> we are now going to look at the pack. So the pack are simply uh, some software that's uh, provided to you that you can add and enhance what's already in FSX at war. For example, uh, we talked about before, I have a pack here. Uh, this pack here is for Captain Sim weapons. So it allows uh, Captain Sim weapon to work inside of FSX at war. So if you have an aircraft with Captain Sim weapons, you can download this pack from the forum uh, fsxatwar.com and you'll be able to use your Captain Sin aircraft inside FSX at War and destroy uh, equipment that's put up by FSX at War. And the same holds, holds true for uh, setup uh, of uh, Milv Milvis uh, F-15E, same thing. If you have that aircraft, you can actually download and install that pack and you'll be able to use the F-15E F -15 alongside with other people that use TACPAC.
And for that matter, you can fly just about any airplane in FSX at war. It does not care if you what kind of airplane you're flying. Uh, after all, you're flying in FSX, you'll see what's in FSX. Now, I have a pack here, and uh, it's a Northern Syria pack. Now, you will notice that uh, I'm not going to run it yet. I want to show you something. But basically, this pack uh, was created by my friend uh, Skyspin. And it, I think it demonstrates something uh, very interesting. So if I go in the tech pack, uh, the uh, tactical reference editor. Now, if you remember that we don't need to go there to run FSX at war, but I just want to show you the packs. And in here, you notice that uh, I have some other packs, right? And before we only had FSX at war packs, so I created other packs on my own. My friend Skyspin created a Western Syria pack. And he also created an art in Syria pack, but I did not install it yet. But you'll notice that there's a red circle here. So if I put my mouse over it, it shows me the errors that are, that are present. So in this case here, it says there are some error in pack references and theater platforms. So, okay, I'll bite. Let me go in. And I have another circle here. So let's check out the reference one. So it's basically saying here that... Uh, the Northern Syria pack is missing. Well, guess what? I have the Northern Syria pack right here. So I can satisfy that error by installing it. So what that's basically saying is uh, we're currently in the Western Syria pack. And the Western Syria pack is actually has a dependence on uh, the, uh, the, the actual uh, FSXL War pack 1. And what it's also saying is the Norton Syria pack has a depend uh, the uh, Western Syria pack also has a dependence on the Norton Syria pack, so it uses stuff that's in the Norton Syria pack. So if I install it, that should satisfy it. So let's go ahead and run it, so you see how easy it is to install a uh, FSX FSX at War uh, uh, pack. So you get this first screen here. Right, and you to point it to your FSX at War directory, and there's a pack directory that's installed with FSX at War. So that's my pack directory. So I click on Next, and it confirms the installation. I click Install, and now it's installed. So let me back out of this here, and back out of this here, and back out of this here. Now let's go back in and see. And you see that my Norton pack is installed, and this time, all the errors are gone. So that's what it was missing. Now what's great about this is that once you have those those packs installed, whatever is designed in those packs is available to you. So if I want to create a campaign, guess what? I got all these packs to choose from. I could choose all of them and see everything that's available to me or just choose one or two. But one thing I want to point out to you is take a look at this here. So if I select my Blue Zone Pack 1, Notice how the, it automatically grays out but selects the FSX at War Pack 1. That's because it needs it in order to function. It knows the dependency. You remember that my Norton Pack was uh, needing FSX at War Pack 1, right? So if I select it, see how it becomes gray? And uh, similarly, my Western Syria Pack needed the Northern Syria Pack as well as the FSX at War Pack. So if I select it, boom, you get all three. So now if we go and create a theater, we have a choice of multiple uh, multiple uh, campaign. So uh, my buddy Skyspin started working on the campaign, I guess, in Syria, uh, whereas uh, we uh, FSX at War comes with the Libya, uh, Libya, a lot of the Libya campaigns. So anyways, uh, so that's in a nutshell how that works uh, for adding a pack and what the pack does. Now, I will uh, come back, and when I come back, we're actually going to look at uh, setting up flight plans and see what you can do with flight plans. Let us look at creating flight plan with FSX at War. So for, we'll first start by picking a campaign. Let's create one campaign, and we'll pick the plane FSX at War Pack 1 for now, and pick the United Protection one. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to zoom. Uh, to zoom, you need to use your mouse wheel, 
and you simply just roll your mouse wheel and it will zoom in for you. So I want to take off from an airport. I'm going to pick this airport here, Lampedusa, from uh, the air base in uh, Italy. Now all I have to do is right click and select create a new flight. So go ahead and do that. Now I want to show you what takes place here. So as soon as I did that, you have a symbol here and it shows that uh, my waypoint, as soon as I put my mouse mouse over it, it shows, shows me the waypoint information. Also on the left hand side here, it creates a flight called Flight 1. So now we're going to create a destination. We've already created a, a start point here. Let's pick that same target that we attacked in the video here. So I put my mouse over and I right click and I can set target of current flight. Now I want to point out that if I zoom in further right, and I start showing the object, I can actually pick this as my target and it will give me exact coordinates. If you look on the right hand side you have the GPS coordinates. This here could be the exact target that you want to hit. But for our example, I'm just going to use a general area. We'll use our radar. We use our radar to find the target. So simply right click. And this is the target of current flight. So now what you will see is it will create some uh, some waypoints for you. Now one thing I want to point out is you can change those waypoints. So if you put your mouse over and you right click, you have some options. You can delete waypoint. You can change a waypoint to different uh, to have different uh, actions now the actions are not important right now but they will be in the future with AI planes you may set up flight plans for AI planes and you want them to do specific things uh, once you're on top of a of an actual obviously you saw in the menu here you can delete a waypoint you can also add a waypoint so if I go in between here I can uh, right click and insert a waypoint I can do that anywhere I like and it, what, it, what it does it appears to put it in the center but uh, once you have some waypoints you can also hover over hold the shift key and then hold the left uh, mouse click and you can drag it wherever you want so you can actually go and by holding the shift key change your whole all your flight plan Now this flight plan here, uh, you'll notice it's going to, uh, it's taken off here and it's coming back to the same base. Now this point here is uh, share, being shared with something else. So let's move that point out of the way. So see how there's a uh, waypoint 8 and waypoint 2 are shared together. So that means that waypoint 1 and 9 are sharing together. So let's say instead if I wanted to take uh, this flight here, but instead of coming back to the same base, I want to go to the center base here in uh, Sigonella. I could go here and view, okay, see how it says waypoint 9? So if I shift click right now, I'm going to capture waypoint 9. Shift left click, I got waypoint 9, and I can put it to this base. But look here, there's magnetic properties where there's an airport. See? I just go close and it wants to go to it. Now, if you're wondering how to find airport, if you look at the symbol on the icon, you can easily tell it's an airport and let me blow up the icon here see now you have a tower and an aircraft that's an airport so you have that magnetic property on any airport including enemy ones <laughs> but uh, not that you want to land there but just so that you know it exists now you'll notice also there's numbers between the, the waypoints those are the distances between the waypoints now you're not limited to just uh, having a flight that goes to a target. You can also have a cover air patrol, for example. So let me start one from uh, another airport. Let me see here if I can get it to give me another flight. Okay, I create another flight and watch what happens. It knows I'm creating another flight, so it hides this other flight that I had created. But it's not gone. It's still here on the left hand side. You see how you have flight one, flight two? I'm just creating flight two right now. And it crossed the eye saying I'm hiding flight one for now. Which suits me just fine. So I'm gonna add a waypoint here in the middle of the, the ocean. And let's say I just want to do a cap a cover air patrol. 
So set current uh, target of flight. And now the same principle, shift, left click, and I can uh, create a, a flight, which is basically uh, a cap flight to, to protect. I can add waypoint, I can change my actions to uh, whatever I, I like. So in this case here, I'll make them all turns. And you could do just about anything. So now, once you have those flights, you can switch between the two flights, uh, you know, by highlighting which one you want. If you want to see both flights, see how I have this I crossed out here icon. All I have to do is click on it, and now I see both flights. But one, the one that's highlighted is actually darker. So now, one thing that's uh, that's uh, awesome with this is that you can actually save this with a campaign so let's save this campaign here with my two flights and I'm gonna save the campaign and I'm gonna call it United Campaign and Blue and I'm gonna save it here and now let's close the campaign so that means that uh, my flight is in the campaign so when I load the campaign I should see it but let's take it a point further Let's say I don't like that it's called flight one and flight two. So let's, uh, this campaign file is basically an XML file. So you can open it with your favorite XML editor. In my case, I happen to associate it to my XML editor. And you can go and change and look for the word flight, flight one. Oh, I can't type or I can't find it. Let me go look for it uh, manually. So we create two flights, and the two flights should be down here. So there's the flight two, and there's the flight one should be right up here. So let's say we call it uh, Viper 1-1 one, one, uh, Strike, for example. OK, and I save. I save my campaign and I load my campaign here. So I open my campaign and there you go. So I have my flight here, my strike flight for Viper and flight two, I didn't change the name. So that's how you change the name. Now, if you want to export those flight plans, all you have to do is select the one that you want and click export flight plan. And then you can export it and put it wherever you want and then use it to load into your either your ACM with your Superbug or load it into your uh, flight planning part of the FSX. I, I will not cover that right now. I will cover it uh, in the next little part. We're going to look at the, the missions and cover that. So that's it for the flight plan. It's very uh, easy to use and very useful to use. If you have installed the latest CCP version 1.3.3.0 or 1.3.3.1, there is something you may have noticed or may not have noticed, but a little gift was left behind for you. So if you look at your CCP folder under Missions and under Campaign, there is a folder called United Protection. You might recall when we looked at the FSX at War uh, interface, there's actually a theater or a campaign called United Protection. As you probably just uh, guessed it by now, it is actually the campaign is designed to work with these these missions here that were created for you. There are 25 very detailed missions here for you to fly uh, by yourself or with your friends. Uh, there's a couple of documents in this folder here that actually uh, gives you information about the missions and whatnot. And each mission has four files. One file is a flight plan to be used inside of FSX. So that means you can fly any plane that can fly that mission. You also have an INI file, which is commonly uh, referred to as an MU for those that fly VR Superbug. And that's the file you would load instead of a flight plan inside your, air, your, uh, your aircraft manager, the ACM. And I'll show you how to do that. You have an MIS file here, which is a mission file for use with CCP. So you're going to use FSX at war in conjunction with CCP to fly those uh, those missions. 
and depending which plane you fly in, VR Superbug uh, or a regular FSX airplane like a F-14 or the Mirage, then you would use the flight plan, FSX flight plan. VR Superbug will use the MU, which is the INI file, and we'll go through that. And finally, you have an XPS file. Take a look at this, how detailed this is. You, this here details your mission. You have the objectives, three different objectives, situation, a map where this occurs. It actually gives you the element that the packages that they will actually take off to do the mission and what they're made up of. You have threats, so you have some intel here. You have your flight plan. You have recommended ordinances, very, very, very detailed, and your rules of engagement, and so on and so forth. So, a lot of work was put into here, and it's a, it's a lot of fun, and you'll see you'll really enjoy doing this. I, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. It's really awesome. So, in any case, uh, one thing I want to point out is when it says here, the first waypoint, for example, here, says it's on a carrier at uh, 350 Zulu, which is uh, 0350 GMT. So that's the time you should start your FSX and you should put yourself on the carrier at 0350 Zulu or GMT and then uh, the mission will work uh, just, uh, just like it's intended to. So now let's take a look at uh, loading up the, the mission first. We'll load the mission file and basically well, all we need to do is go to use our CCP in the monitor section and import the mission. And if we go to the missions folder under campaign, United Protection, that's in your CCP by the way. You see all the missions here. So load mission number one. And these are all the objects that are used during the mission. It's really something else. So now uh, what you would do is uh, obviously you want to start on the carrier. So you go through the boat section, start on the carrier, and then connect to FSX and whatnot. <coughs> Excuse me. So in order to proceed for the missions, what I recommend you do is just start FSX and let it, uh, let it do the, uh, what it needs to do to cache the objects. Then start your CCP, uh, select, uh, make sure you select to start on the boat, connect to FSX, and then it will put you on the boat. All the objects are already cached, so it should be great. So now that we have CCP taken care of, we need to load our uh, flight plan. So if you fly in the VR Superbug, you can go and open your aircraft manager, click on the MU tab, and then you can, at the bottom here, you'll see a button that says Load MU. So select Load MU, and you want to go to your CCP uh, folder and go find the mission. So I go to, and mine is installed in FSX at War, CCP, Missions, Campaign, Night Protection, and there's my MU for mission one, uh, recon.ini. I click open, it loads it. So now you see I have my whole flight plan in front of me. All I have to do is save aircraft, fire up FSX with my VR Superbug, and I'm good to go. If you're flying a different airpla airplane than a VR Superbug, then you need to load the flight plan directly into FSX. So in this case here, I'm flying the Mirage. So what I would do is uh, go and to the flight planner here, see this button? And then in the flight planner, you have a button to load a flight plan here. So you click on load, find your flight plan. So going back again through my folders to find the mission. And there you go, there's my flight plan for mission one. And it will ask me if I want to start on the uh, the airport listed. Uh, I could say yes if I already had the time set up that I wanted. In my case, I don't have the time set up, so I'll say no for the time being. But the flight plan is still loaded. Remember, you have to set your time to GMT. And if you recall, it was 3.50. So before I would start my mission, I would go and make sure that I have the time set to 3.50. And then be good to go from there. And that's all there is to, to that. Then you start your FSX, let it uh, cache the objects, you start the CCP, connect to FSX, and enjoy the mission, repeat letter and rinse. 
So that's all there was to this video. Uh, thank you for taking the time to go over it with me. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I have. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Many more videos to come on a little bit more advanced topics with FSX at War. Happy hunting.